Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Hello, my Brand Theory listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast. Today, we are chatting with Carrie Murphy, and I will get into her full intro in just a second. Just want to give you a friendly weekly reminder that the brand, the brand, I almost said the Brand Theory Shop, the On Brand Shop is now open for business. It's your go to shop for the most comfortable crewnecks, joggers, hoodies. We've got t-shirts and a most beautiful throw pillow. We even added an eco-friendly tote to get ready for those beach days. And these products all have the on-brand statement, bold statement, or the on-brand definition. These products are your constant daily reminder and comfortable and stylish reminder to live your most authentic life and make choices from that place of living true to yourself and that compile the most on-brand life for yourself. So head over to the shop, use on-brand 10 for savings. And without further ado, I'd love to introduce my beautiful guest for today, Carrie Murphy. She is not only the CEO and founder of Inspired Living, Carrie is also committed to empowering people all over the world to dream it, live it, and be it. Her company specializes in teaching entrepreneurs how to stand out online, authentically show up on camera, and become industry leaders in their space. A veteran of television with appearances on MTV, E, Fox, and NBC, to just to name a few, Carrie brings her hard-worn entrepreneurial knowledge and on-camera expertise to her clients through public speaking, coaching, programs, and her Inspired Living TV web series and podcast, helping entrepreneurs stay inspired and enlightened on what it takes to build a seven-figure brand. Carrie's signature It Factor training is the most sought-out on-camera training for entrepreneurs in the U.S. and has been featured on CNN, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, and many more. She's been referred to by her clients as a captivating teacher who can spot and cultivate the it factor in anyone, including her clients and students, and help them shine on stage, on camera, and in their lives and businesses. What an intro. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. So I know we heard a lot about you in your amazing intro there, but I'd love to hear just a little bit more about your backstory and how you kind of got this started. Was this always something you wanted to be doing? Tell us a little bit more about that. You know, it's quite the story. (laughs) Well, buckle up. (laughs) Um, But growing up, I grew up with a family full of entertainers and I knew early on I, I wanted to be a part of that. I didn't know exactly what that looked like. I just knew that I wanted to be in the entertainment industry. And then as I got older, Danielle, that kind of morphed into TV hosting, wanting to host my own shows. But then I also had this innate bug to have my own business and do my own thing. So I started modeling and acting. I'm going to say modeling was like a hot, hot second. Um, when I was about 11 years old, so awkward. Um, (laughs) and then I started my first business at 23. And what I found at that time, you know, this is before, I mean, we had everything that we have today, right? I didn't even have a website back then. Um, but I knew that video, like getting on camera would help grow my business. And so I was, um, the local interior design expert on our morning show. I obviously, I was an interior designer for five years. And then I had the opportunity to buy the talent agency I went through as a little girl at 27. Really? Yes. And that was amazing. At 27. Wow. Yep. My mom and I both put in $15,000. Um, I had worked for the owner of the agency right out of college. So I had a good understanding of every role in her business and was probably a little too confident. <laughs> at um, but you know, it growed and, and, and scaled to almost a million dollar business when we had the recession in 2008. Okay. And wow. maybe like, you know, someone felt in 2020 kind of had the rug like torn out from under me. Like I had no idea. I was so naive. I had no business coaches. I just, I loved what I did. I love developing talent. I always have as a little girl, Danielle, I would find the shyest person in the room and like help them get out of their shell. I mean, it was like my first husband. It was, you know, (laughs) I just, I see potential in people. And so, you know, I, when I lost everything and I put that in air quotes, because I think that sometimes when we lose everything, we gain 
mm-hmm. everything. I love that perspective. Um, I moved out to Los Angeles on my own. I grew up in Oregon. I left my family and I signed with one of the top agencies out here to pursue my childhood dream of becoming that TV host. And I think I wanted to say for a minute, sometimes we all have this dream that we see and then we start to pursue it and we're like, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Like this isn't what I thought it would be. And I found myself like just feeling empty and kind of like social media statistics, right? Just like, you know, like this false metric of success after being an entrepreneur for 10 years, waiting for someone to give me a job. And so I decided I, after a year of being a personal development trainer, um, people started asking me if I coach and I said, yes, sure do. And that brought me to where I am really today. I had this aha moment about 10 years ago that I could teach entrepreneurs how to be on camera. This was mm-hmm. before it was as big as it is today, but yeah. I just, I've always known like video is the vehicle because I always used it to grow my businesses. I just didn't realize it at the time. I was right. like, oh, I have this video marketing strategy. I just knew even when I owned my talent agency, I was doing fashion segments and I was on the news and I was always out there being visible because I knew that was an important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And so here we are today right? Where we don't have a choice. Like you have to be visible in your business or you're just not going to make it. There's just Mm -hmm. too much competition and too much content. Yeah, absolutely. And someone who comes from the personal branding world a little bit, um, it's video is such a platform that really allows people, your audience, your community to see you and to see your mannerisms. And if you talk with your hands and if somebody can relate to that or like just the words you use and just the ups and downs of your verbal and how you can, and it's such a powerful platform for communicating emotion and emotion tells a story and story sell. And it's round Robin for building your personality, but also your business. Yeah. I love well, you that. You know what? We're just with this world that we're in that's so technology based and so app driven. And so, like I said, kind of like, like, holding ourselves up to these false metrics on social, like video really is the opportunity for you to show up as your most authentic self. There are four C's that I teach people when it comes to video and you just nailed it. Like connection. You have to be able to emotionally connect. And that's the beautiful thing about video. It is multi-sensory. We get to hear you. We see you, you know, we actually feel you if you're authentic with what you're saying and building that rapport, building that trust is so important. But when you look at statistics, The average person watches a video for three to eight seconds before they decide whether they're going to keep watching or go to the next distraction. Three Three to eight eight seconds. seconds. Yeah. God. It's bananas. And we've tested, we've tested it time and time again with our Facebook ads and videos. And it really is spot on. You have about Mm. three to eight seconds and they either keep watching or they head off somewhere else. So, so establishing that emotional connection is the most important thing you you can do with your brand overall. Like, what do you stand for? Who are you? Why you? What's important for your client? So that's number one. But then you have number two, and that is consistency. And when people come to us, they're like, oh my God, Carrie, I'm comfortable on camera. I go live like once a month and, you know, I do a video kind of whenever I feel like it. I'm like, that's great. And right. Consistency always wins. Like the more you're in front of people in this super congested marketplace, people have to see you, hear you, feel you 25 times before they're going to make a buying decision to work with you. Mm -hmm. So if you're only showing up once a month, how many months do you have to show up in front of this person for them to actually say yes to you? That's over two years, guys. (laughs) Too long of a time, too long of a time. So connection and then consistency. And the more you show up with those two things, Danielle, you have what we all need. And that is credibility. Mm. You want to be seen as the go-to expert, the sought after leader. You want to be able to stand out as that go-to, you know, person that I seek out when it comes to A or B, right? And so we really work with our clients on stop trying to talk to everyone really show up in your niche, like know why you, because when you show up as credible, right, you're building that trust. And when you finally establish that trust, people will then hand you over their credit card. And so the, the last C is conversion, right? Everyone wants a quick fix. Everyone wants to make six figures in six seconds. And, you know, as much as I would love to say that's possible, it's not, Um, you have to have connection, consistency, credibility, and conversion. Yeah. I love that over and over and over again. I love that. The four C's is like laws to live by in the business. Write them down, put them up and ask yourself every day, how am I doing this? 
Yeah. I love that. So you said something about niching down and how important that is. And I just feel like every time a guest comes on here and talks about that, I want to really address it because it's so important. I know I made the mistake too, when I started the business of including everybody and I'll just help everybody and whoever wants to pay me, I'll just help them. But if you have a credit card, you are my client. (laughs) Exactly. But what was happening was I was taking on clients who just were not aligned with me. They were the ones who were giving me headaches. And I'm sure that they felt the same for me because I wasn't excited about the work that I was doing for them. So you, can you give us any advice around really how important it is to niche down? I actually think, and I know that this is a little controversial, but I think there's never been a time where it has been more important to niche down. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's online. There are billions of eyeballs. There's more content than we can shake a stick at like content overload, like content confusion is real. So if you're trying to, and this is my kind of catch phrase, if you're trying to catch the ocean, when every time you go, you know, live or every time you press record, it's hi everyone, you know, then if I'm scrolling and I'm fishing for content that connects with me, that does not because it's not clear enough. And I don't know if you're a life coach or a trainer or a realtor, like you're one of millions, let's be honest. So mm-hmm. like, again, Danielle, what you and I do, there's lots of other people that do it. So we have to understand why us, like why, why are we the person for you? And then the more you get known from one thing, the more you can grow. Yeah. An example, when I started Inspired Living, I came off a year of teaching like neuroscience, um, kind of like Tony Robbins, right? Lots okay. of personal development. So Inspired Living was really all things. Inspired Living to me at the time was health and fitness and finances and relationships and business. And I had a video on my website, but no one knew what I did. Like, what right. do you do? That's never what you want someone to ask you. When they go to your site, when they go to your Instagram, wherever they see you, they know instantly what you do. And the more you get known for that thing, the easier it is to speak on other people's stages, to collaborate, to have affiliates, to like, we have a makeup line now, Mm -hmm. right? You can start to um, diversify your offerings when you get known for the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important. In fact, I talk all the time about Seth Godin's book, This Is Marketing, because I feel like everything he says in that book, I literally want to stand on a mountaintop and be like, this is it. He talks about really speaking to the smallest viable market. Yeah. Now, this is so contrary to what we think because in our head, we think, no, I need to reach millions. But that is not the case. And quite frankly, unless you have a puppy or a baby, that's not going to happen, right? So, <laughs> so like, it's just so important that emotional connection and then niching down, becoming that specialist, that go-to expert in your thing. And I just want that person listening right now who feels so overwhelmed with this concept to think about what is the thing that plugs you in, that lights you up, that is your most genius work. And if you don't know it yet, start exploring it. You know, Mm -hmm. ask your clients, do some R&D. Like, I love what I do so much. I would do it for free. I'm really glad I don't have to. Right. But it brings me so much joy and it is my jam. Like I am really good at teaching people how to show up on camera and authentically grow a business. Mm -hmm. Um, But it took me some time to figure that out as well. So it's like, you know, sometimes you have to give yourself permission and grace to just start showing up. Mm -hmm. and start doing work and then start experimenting a little bit. Yeah, Like a new realtor, for example, you know, they don't know, do they want to specialize with new home buyers, with empty nesters, with families Mm. looking to expand, you know, you need to kind of figure that out. And so if you're new in business, give yourself some time, but I will say the quicker you figure it out, the easier it is to grow your business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're referring to us as your thing or figure out your thing would, and I know you have an it factor training that's yes. talked about everywhere the and highly sought factor. after. Yes. The it factor. Would you explain the it factor as someone's thing as their go-to expertise? Yeah. So to me, the it factor is actually not so specific as to okay. the one thing to me growing up in entertainment, right? I mm-hmm. would hear that term all the time you know, Ooh, she has it, or he has it. And then remember that the show X factor, you know, and Simon Cowell, like, Oh, they have it. So the it factor is this inner quality, Danielle, that is palpable, that makes people like literally turn around and look at you when you walk into a room. And I remember when I owned my talent agency, we would have open auditions every month and we'd have all sorts of people, young and old come in, you know, with their copy and their commercial ready to do. And I remember those people who were so green, like had never done any acting in their life, 
but man, they would come in and there was just something about them. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to work with that. And I really believe we all have it. We all have that magnetic quality, that truth, that, that star factor within us. But most of us due to life circumstances, religion, family, life experiences, it's on dim. Like mm. we're walking around on dim because we've been told, don't talk too much. Don't be too loud. Are you crazy to do that? Like no one's going to do that. Why would you leave your full-time job and go pursue your dream? You know? And so we're constantly told, dim it down, mm. dim it down. And so we do the exact opposite in Inspired Living, dude. We turn it up. We turn <laughs> it up. We help you find it. We help you develop it. We help you shine it out there in the world because with, you know, almost 8 billion people on the planet, again, what you do is great, but who you are is what people choose to, to buy. Yes. I love so that. It is really figuring out who you be in the world, not what yeah. you offer, not the yeah. thing. And that's the it factor. And when you have that, then everything that you do, your website copy, how you show up online, your videos, your offerings, all starts to make more sense. And you have a confidence that people see. I mean, people see a sincere, authentic confidence, not an orchestrated cockiness, right? But it's a real, like, I know I am great for you and I can help you. And here's how, and here's why. And then here's my story mm. that edifies and shares the example of how I can help you. It's all part of it. So mm -hmm. I often get asked, do we all have it? Yes, we do. Yeah. But most of us have it on low. Yeah. And just to reiterate that your factor of when we're, when you're showing up in the video platform, but then when we go and read your copy on your website or your copy in your captions, that it factor, once you nail it, it starts to shine through, I feel. Oh my gosh, it does. And you start to see, it, and then you start just getting people. And I, I share with people all the time, Danielle, that, you know, people will stalk you way before. Yeah. They oh yeah. I say that all the time. <laughs> way before they buy from you. I mean, I have people that come out of the word work. Like I've been watching you for years. Like I've been looking at your stuff and I'm finally ready. You know, I didn't know that they were doing that. They right. weren't liking and commenting on everything. And so again, kind of going back to this false metric of if my social isn't big enough, if people aren't commenting enough, you know, I can't be successful. And there's a lot of people that have small social that make a lot of great money. I know mm -hmm. people that don't have social at all and are millionaires. Yeah. And then I, I know people that have huge followings and really struggle with monetizing it. So I'm sharing this because I think it's so important because this comparison analysis, this paralysis of, you know, perfection and needing to be where someone else is. And I just want to reiterate, we are all on our own journey. Your chapter is different than mine. And the more you try to compare yourself to someone else, the less that it factor shines. I love that. Put that on repeat guys, cut that clip, put it on repeat, listen to it in the morning and <laughs> in the evening, anytime you need it, because it's so true. It's we, we want to look at those numbers for certain things, like see what sure. kind of copy is working, see what kind of content people are liking. But at the end of the day, you're so right. We can see a platform with 20,000, 20 million, and they're having sh trouble monetizing because they're not showing up authentic or they're not showing up as themselves. So that's so important yeah. to remember that guys. Um, okay. Let's get into where should we be focusing on the video platforms and which one should we be using to grow our businesses right now? Yeah, that's such a good question. I, you know, there's a lot of platforms out there and I will say we have million dollar assets at our fingertips. You know, when I had my first business at 23, Danielle, I know I am dating myself. Um, but I mean, we had like yellow pages, <laughs> like, you know, we had to like actually shoot TV commercials, you yeah. know, and now look at this. Like we have the opportunity to go live and reach people anytime we feel like it. Mm -hmm. We can do Facebook ads. We can run campaigns. Like it really is amazing what we have access to right now. And yet most people less, actually the statistic is less than 25% of entrepreneurs are using video effectively. Wow. So I think the most important thing is before you look at all the platforms and start overwhelming yourself with clubhouse and TikTok and all the things, who is he or she and get super platform, the existential, the external, right? So where do they live? How much money do they make? Are they spiritual? Are they religious? They have 2.5 kids. They love yoga. They visit the Cayman Islands. Like, you know, that's great. And that is important to know. But I think when it comes to video, the most important thing to know is the psychographic. How are they feeling? what's going on in their life? What is their greatest pain when it comes to what it is that you offer and the solutions you provide? What's possible for them once they get your product or service? 
when you understand the psychographic, it is so easy to have that emotional connection because you start talking to that one person. Mm. I'm just going to rewind and say that again. Mm -hmm. One person at a time. Please don't start with hi, everyone. You totally take me out of the game. It becomes like, I'm not important. It's not personal, right? It's you. You speak in the singular and you speak through the camera lens. Now you just asked me about platforms. I, I think it's really important to understand that first. And then you ask yourself, okay, if this is my person based on age, psychographic, what they like to do, knowing both of those things, where are they hanging out? Mm-hmm. Are they still on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on TikTok? Are they, you know, hanging out for hours on Clubhouse? You know, where are they? Are they on LinkedIn? That's a really powerful platform as well. YouTube. I just have to say, everyone should have a YouTube channel. As we know, Google owns YouTube. So for search engine, SEO, all of those things, have a YouTube channel. Yeah. But then I want you to think about where's my person? If you have a corporate executive, they're not hanging out on TikTok most of the time. You right. Know? And so I think I, we, we teach our clients, especially in the beginning, choose three, choose three and implement those four C's be okay. consistent, right? Build credibility, build trust, DM people have conversations, you know, bring it um, back then, to being social. <laughs> yes. Social media. Right. And they're called channels. So it's all about broadcasting. Really? You know, it's all about finding out your message, your channel, what people can expect. And then it's like, finding your favorite show and never knowing when it's going, right? Like you're trying to Netflix binge something and you're like, I can't find it. Mm -hmm. That's like your channel. That's why consistency is so important because you're trying to drive the audience and that connection there. So we Ah. say start with three and it's not about what channels do you love. Um, Even though I think that is important. You don't want to be on something that you don't enjoy, but it really comes down to where is my person and how often can I get in front of them? Yeah. I love that. Okay. So you were talking to us about the three to five, three to eight seconds, and we shouldn't use broader terms like everyone. What can we do to flip that language and to really grasp someone's attention in those three to eight seconds? Danielle, that is such a good question. Okay, good. <laughs> so, um, here's, here's the secret. Instead of starting your videos with why me, for example, this is just a little example. Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy, the CEO and founder of Inspired Living. And for over three decades, I have been on camera. And for the last 12 years, I've specialized in teaching entrepreneurs how to show up powerfully on video and scale their businesses to six figures and beyond. Okay. People don't care. They don't care. Now, go with me here. You are a business owner and you know you need to be using video to grow your business. And yet the thought of it, is terrifying. <laughs> like, That's you know, so good. <laughs> you have such a powerful message to share, but every time you press record, you actually forget your name. Like it is so hard for you to show up on video. Although, you know, you are amazing and have a message people need to listen to. So that was what that six seconds in when I was freaking out about that. Right, right. Like I literally, you literally get this feeling of, oh my God, I'm on the edge of my seat. I don't know what she's yeah, saying. That's now. me. I, don't know. Like, I get yeah. to, like I, and people. That's exactly Danielle. What happens? People lean in. You start peaking curiosity. Like, okay, she's talking to me. What else is she going to say? That is, by the way, that is a million dollar takeaway. Our clients pay us a lot of money for that. Like start with the WIFM. What's in it for me? Why do I care about what it is that you're saying? You know, hi everyone. I'm Carrie. What a beautiful day. I'm amazing. Look at all my stuff. Like no one cares. Right. No one cares about you until they know that you care about them. So start with the why. Start with why they should care. Share a funny story. And if you do start with you, you could be like, okay, moms. Does anyone else have a baby out there? Because I'm having the hardest time with getting Mm. Landon to sleep. Like, it's Mm. not true, but I'm just saying, like, how can someone else actually connect with what you're saying and they raise a hand and says, oh my gosh, that's me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a different me too movement. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Got it. (laughs) Okay. That's awesome. And then, okay. So for these three platforms, how often do you think, I know it's different for every platform, but how often should we be showing up like every single day? Is that 20 minutes a day? Is there a certain formula to that? Or is it really just kind of figuring out again, where we want to be, where our ideal clients are and kind of using those platforms to the best of their ability? Yeah, we have like a blueprint for our clients when they come in and we have like minimum recommendations Mm. and like how to really pump it up and and grow and build your audience. So I think a minimum 
a minimum of a video a week, whether okay. that's a live, that's curated content. Now I always share, like I do one production day a month, one, mm. I shoot four to five videos. I then have my content for the month for my weekly video blog that goes out. I upload it onto YouTube. We edit it. We put it up on the website. We use it for Instagram. We snip it into you know reels and stories. So the wonderful thing about Instagram, I just want to say really quickly, is that if you're a little camera shy, the stories are great. They're 15 seconds. They're gone tomorrow. You know, you really start to build that video muscle, and video is a muscle. Like you can't just do it once and be like, oh my god, I'm amazing. You know, going back to Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours. Like you got to work at it, and the more you do it, the easier it is. So I would say, you know, if you you are really like camera shy and you're not sure, I would use it every day, just like you would do anything that you want to get excellent at on a regular basis, right? So, um, but I would just say as far as content goes, there's the authentic, what I call personality videos, which are your stories, your behind the scenes. Those are just imp as important, if not more important than the curated professional content you're putting out there. Lives you know, go live once a week. The algorithms will love you. You build your audience, you build rapport, so much good stuff. But I would say a minimum, minimum of once a week. Yeah. Okay. That's a good, I'll accept that answer. That's okay. good with me. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, so with that, with people who are so nervous to show up on, on social media or especially in video, I always, what you were saying, like those videos for behind the scenes, it's great. It's a like great for building up your pot confidence of how to use the platform, your video style, and then I even have clients who are just starting out with social media, send me videos beforehand. And I'm like their biggest cheerleader of, Oh, I love it. It's amazing. I yeah. can't wait for you. You know what I'm saying? It, it could be a slow progression, Absolutely. but I, but I agree that do it. If you're scared, you got to do it every day, <laughs> do it yeah, every do it single every day. day. <laughs> do it and again. Stories is a great place to play because they go away. You know, you don't, it's not like evergreen content you're putting out there, mm -hmm. but it really is. It's building that muscle, building that confidence. And I say all the time, confidence comes from doing, not thinking. You cannot take another webinar, another masterclass, another free challenge and expect your life to change. Mm -hmm. Like you actually have to do the work. You, you, you have the to action. show up Absolutely. and get confident in any aspect of your business by doing the thing. Yeah. Right? So Love it. So I know you grew up in the entertainment industry and again, surrounded by all these video platforms and grew up your business through these different modalities of changing video platforms. But I'm just so curious. And I feel like the audience would be as well. Do you ever get nervous to show up anymore? Or did you ever get nervous when you're first starting? Oh, sure. I mean, I, I got nervous all the time. Um, I will say I had to really break the host um, the host carry. Hi mm. and welcome and super like everyone else does. Their voice goes up an octave and yeah. they're super smiley all the time. Um, that's not real. And so I really had to learn to get into my heart and out of my head. And mm. I would watch my videos back literally like I was watching a scary movie. Like, oh my <laughs> gosh, that is horrific. Um, but now, I mean, I've been doing it for so long. I don't get nervous anymore. I will say I host an incredible masterclass about every eight weeks called video confidence and conversion. And every, every single day one, I have butterflies in my stomach. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, because I just, I want it to be so impactful for them. Mm -hmm. like, I really want to show up and help them and the pressure of doing that. So, I mean, yes, I get butterflies still. And if I'm, I'm doing large summits and things like that, but I've learned how to channel that energy, but I'm not nervous to like show up. Right. Yeah. I just, I have the pressure of, I really want to provide amazing content and inspire lives and help people step into possibility. So I think that's where that comes yeah, from. Yeah. As you were saying that in that point where you're talking about the impact, I think as entrepreneurs, we get into this because we believe we have an impact to make. Like we believe yeah. we're here for a bigger reason, right? Yeah. Or even if you're a VA or if you're a life coach, like I feel like people get into the business for themselves because they just feel they have this mission to, yeah. to outlive. Right. And I think the nerves, I could definitely see somebody like you or even somebody like me. It's not, we don't get nervous to get on coaching calls, right? We don't get nervous to do podcasts like this. We just get nervous. It's more of an exciting, like, I know that this material has such an ability to impact yeah. one person's life. And that has the ability to impact another person. And it's this yeah. ripple effect. And when you start to think about that, it's like, it's not a nerd. It's, like, it it's a, so oh much. my goodness. Yeah. It means yeah. so much. You just want to make sure you're doing yourself and all of these people justice. Yeah. I have to say, I have been emceeing and hosting events 
since I was probably 18, 19. And every year I host our signature brilliant event. And it is one of my most favorite things on the planet. And um, every time I am behind the door before I go out to start, I am a wreck. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, again, it just means so much and you want to have such an impact. And I think the greater impact you want to make, probably the more nerves that come mm, with it, you know? And I sure. think that, you know, to shake it out, to take those big diaphragmatic belly breaths, you know, and to move. I think, you know, the great advice before you go on camera is move, like yeah. shake the nerves out, you know, motorboat your lips, like move your face because when your energy is stilted and static, you literally stop moving. Your voice gets really shaky because you're not moving that energy. So when I go out on stage, I am dancing. I am moving. I'm yeah. getting that energy out. And then I settle in. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's like anything. Like you remember when you were a kid, you would start a new soccer team or a new softball team or the new school year. You're nervous for right before because you're kind of excited about the newness of it. But then once yeah. you get settled in, you're good. It's like, you're like about, I got this. I got yeah. this. I'm good. This is my spot. It's where I belong. So with anybody who's nervous about showing up on the video platforms, the only way to get past those nerves is to do it. And when you do feel it, uncomfortable, and I will say, then. slow down. Like mm -hmm. you know, slow down. Use your deeper voice. Don't be up here. Hi, because we get nervous. We get up here. Like bring it down. Get in your heart chakra. Like big belly breaths. And the biggest, actually the, the biggest change that you will see is when you stop looking at this black hole and you start actually seeing a person. Mm. You're speaking through the camera lens, not at the camera lens. You have to know who you're talking to. And I will tell you, I know in a hot second if someone's connected or they're just talking because they feel like they want to talk. And that is the big difference with online right now. Yeah. Again, three to eight seconds. We know if your message is resonating with me or it's not, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Very powerful. Okay. So you kind of answered this already. I think at this point in the interview, people always answer this question, but I like to ask anyway, was there a time in your life where you were living off brand and how did you navigate that and start living on brand? So what I mean by that is, were you ever offering a service as you kind of told us before with transitioning in your business or were you offering or were you drinking pool and spring water when you want to spring Fiji water. Is there any kind of small example or large example of living not necessarily authentic to yourself? And how did you navigate back to, to living authentically? That's a great question. You know, I would say looking back at my life, everything I've always done has come from an authentic place. Mm. I never do anything. I mean, yeah, I've tried, like I've had someone, you know, build out a funnel for me that wasn't authentic. That was $20,000 down the drain. Mm. So I've, I've tried things to match what I felt I needed to do to meet the level of where I wanted to go. If that makes sense. Like, Oh, yeah. if everyone else in this seven figure world is doing this and I should be doing it too. That is the only time I can think of that. I have actually been inauthentic to myself and my brand, yeah. but I didn't know it at the time. You know, it wasn't yeah. like, Oh, I, I want to drink Fiji, but I'm drinking, you know, Kirkland. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, um, about that. I was being authentic. I was just naive. I just didn't know, mm. you know? So I think there's a difference than actually knowing that you're being inauthentic to yourself and doing something, um, for the sake of doing it versus sure. being it. Yeah. But as I grow and evolve, I mean, we let go of things all the time of things that don't feel like they're on brand for us anymore. Like we used to do this program and that's not where I want to spend my time right now. So let's evolve and move it over here. So I think one of the keys to being a successful entrepreneur is innovation and adaptability. Like yeah. You have to be willing to adapt. You have to be willing to give yourself space to figure out if you are being authentic. Because what happens sometimes is you get caught in the hamster wheel of the, the everyday, the doing, the doing, the doing, the doing, the doing. And we forget about the being. And then when we get to sit back and go, I'm exhausted. I'm miserable. I'm working with clients that aren't in alignment. You know, I'm chasing after money. Like this is not fun. When it stops being fun, I think you're out of authenticity. Because mm. I don't think God, the universe, whoever wants us to do anything that we dread every day. I just, right. I don't believe that. That is the, you know, absolute opposite of inspired living. So I think that's important. And so for me, no, I, I've never actually said this, I'm being inauthentic on purpose. Right. But I think as we grow the business, there's definitely been choices that I've made, um, trying to fit a mold that didn't fit for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, there's a lot of 
things that we're consuming every single day. And we, every single day, it's easy to get caught up of, oh, okay, that funnel is working really well for her. So I'm just going to do that. Or I'm going to hire that person for 20,000 to do it for me. Yeah. So speaking a little bit more about that, cause I've made investments that didn't pan out the way I wanted for that exact reason. I don't know if it was exact, you know, copy and paste reasoning of why you did it. But in those moments, you have to, if anybody's listening to this saying, oh, wow, that's come up for me, or I made that mistake too, blah, blah, blah. How do you let go of any kind of shame or guilt over that and just move on? Because it serves us no good to feel bad about those experiments when we were doing it from that authentic place, like you were saying. Look, you are not an entrepreneur if you don't take risks and you don't fail. You're not. You own a job, you're safe, you're not growing. Like failing is actually the stepping stones that get you to where you want to go. If you don't try things, then you'll never know what works and what doesn't work. We've made a lot of costly decisions. And if I sat there and go, oh my God, that was the worst decision ever, Carrie. Why did you do that? Why did you hire that person? Or why did you invest in that? Or why did you put money in those ads that didn't work for you? Yeah. I actually never do that. And I think part of it is just my spirit. Like I just, I've never been someone who sits in guilt and shame very long. Um, I will say that was a stupid decision. <laughs> I like, couldn't have made a better one there. Um, but I, I quickly learn and then I just move on to what's next because sitting in that space, you know, we'll have people that invest with us and they're like, I'm really scared because I've invested before and I didn't get a result. You know, I get that and I honor that, but move forward, you know, mm-hmm. like make the next best decision for yourself. And I will say, I'm always, always investing in myself in my team. I actually think that it is imperative as business leaders that we continually invest in ourselves because what we see for our life isn't, isn't innate for most of us. Like we're not born successful CEOs or successful business owners. Like they're built, they're created. You know, I'm always talking about building my CEO muscle. Like like we've got to be willing to fall down just like my little girl does when she rides a bike. Like we got to be willing to fall down and then get back up again and be like, you know what? That hurt. That was a really yeah. poor experience. Don't really want to do that again, but I have a destination to get to and I'm going to get myself back on that bike. Dang Amen, it. sister. That's right. <laughs> Love it. That was awesome. Thank you for that. And just one more kind of personal question as we wrap up here, how do you manage it all? How do you do it all? The mom thing and the business thing and the seven figure income level of a business. How do you do that all? I'm not going to lie. It's a lot. (laughs) It's a lot, but I will say, um, I am so in love with what we do. Mm -hmm. Really. I love our clients. I, I love my team. Um, I'm constantly investing in my team and I will say like, that can be very scary. Like you're, you're actually bringing someone on and you are providing, you know, um, a revenue source for them. Like you're now responsible for another person and their livelihood and their family and they're dependent on you. So I take that very seriously. Yeah. Um, but I will say that without my team, there's just no way, you know, we have a nanny that helps us at the house, which I'm so grateful for. And this all comes down to, did this just happen overnight? I was a single mom for three years, building inspired living on my own, you know? And so I will say there is a drive in me that is just supersonic. Like I just love what I do, but I also am in a point right now where I am committed to creating more space mm-hmm. and really focusing on my best and highest use as I teach other people. Cause it's really easy to get stuck in the minutia and find that, you know, you wake up and your day is gone. Like you are yeah. booked every hour on the hour yeah. and that doesn't feel good. Cause I think we all need to create space. So it's a, it's a constant, like work in progress. I'm just yeah. going to be honest. Like there are days I'm like, this is amazing. And then there's days I'm like, what in the world? Like, um, so help, help. And I, I love to work out. I love to run. I, I breathe. I try to meditate on a regular basis. Again, I try. Um, and I, you know, I give myself a massage every other week. Like, I just think that we have to be able to unplug so we can charge when we need to, you know what I mean? So we can mm-hmm. show up and be the driver. Cause yeah. if you are a woman who has a family and you're running a successful business and you're running team, like, you know, it is a little superhuman. Like we have a little crazy in our DNA, but yet we can't do it alone. And I think asking for help is the most important thing. Like I need help. I need to create more space, clear my calendar. I'm going to go take, you know, a vacation with my husband. Like, I think it's really easy to get stuck in the doing and we start to forget who we want to be in the world. And so that's kind of where I am. I'm like, we're running so fast and we're growing so fast. I'm like, I'm hiring more people now. And it's just like, 
And I'm like, stop booking my calendar so much. Yeah. 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 I think, and by you doing that and kind of taking that leadership, whether you realize it or not, and I'm sure you do, you're giving other people, women who don't have families yet, like me, but who aspire to be that one day permission to eventually say, yeah, yeah, I need help or I need you to do the dishes tonight or her just taking or that I'm time. I'm just going to leave the dishes for a minute. I mean, exactly. I'm in my bed every single morning. Every day. I, I have to. <laughs> but I will say this morning, getting ready for you, putting land into bed. I'm like, the bed's not made yet. And you know what? It can wait. It mm. can wait 10 more minutes or 30 more minutes or whatever yeah. it is. I think that we just have to give ourselves grace Absolutely. and we have to have compassion for other people and more importantly, compassion for ourselves, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think when you need a break, take it. Yeah. Um, but I will, I will say to you and every other like younger business owner out there as like your big sister, everything that you want is possible for you. I mean, there, you don't have to sacrifice having a family. I didn't have kids till I was in my forties. And again, I was a single mom for three years, no family around me. So you are beyond capable of creating whatever it is you want for yourself. And just to trust yourself, trust timing, trust your intuition. If I could go back and if there's, I wouldn't change anything in my life, but if I would go back and speak to the younger version of Carrie, I would sit her down and say, your intuition is the greatest gift you've been given. Listen to it, follow it, trust it. You know, and I continually say that to this Carrie today. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting to get choked up on this episode, guys, oh. but here we are. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Um, any last thoughts before we leave us today? And definitely tell us where we can find you, where people can hang out with you and find more about what you do because it's so amazing and so inspiring. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I just want to leave with just reminding you that, you know, you really are a miracle that if you look at what it took to get you on the planet where you are today, that there are no accidents, that whatever got you to where you are listening to this episode right now is perfect. You're not broken. And that the vision that you have on your heart, whatever it is, and it's going to change because we change and to give ourselves permission for the vision to change, I think is important. Um, But just it's, it's your compass. So keep taking the next step. Don't worry about falling down because that's life. You will, you will, because if you don't, you're living a life that is a cartoon. (laughs) That's a Disney movie. Um, But just to believe, I think that's the most important thing is that in order for someone to invest in you, in order for you to grow a brand that's bigger than you, you have to believe in you and what you're doing and what you can provide people. And without that, you know, it'll be too difficult to really create what it is that you want. It starts with you. Love it. Awesome. Where can we find more of you? Where can people come say hi? Oh, Inspired Living. Where can you find us best? Well, I will say most people want to know like what type of camera equipment, how do I set up my home studio? What, you know, what do I need? So we created this really beautiful PDF, which is our B Studio Ready Guide. If you go to inspiredliving.tv, like television, um, you can download it and it's really helpful. So that would be number one, go to the website, get the guide. And then also follow us on Instagram. Um, We do a masterclass every eight weeks. So if you are excited to learn more, you know, you'll see all the postings on our Instagram and, you know, you can always DM me. I will personally respond back to you and would just love to help any way that I can. Love it. Thank you so much for being here today and for sharing all of this amazing information and definitely a strong inspiration. And I know that the audience is going to love it. It's going to be on our repeat Thank episode. You so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.